September 10th, 2005, item number 85. Today's guest is Charlie George from the Tired Thumbs Podcast. Podcast411.com. Listen different. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Rob, and this is the Podcast 411 Podcast. Before we get into the interview with Charlie, one real news and unfortunate to sad one, and, and that has to do with Derek with Skepticality. For those of you that aren't aware, Derek is in the hospital in serious condition right now. He had a brain aneurysm type event late Thursday night. He is in critical condition, but I understand stable condition. And this is going out to you, Derek and Susan and Swoopy, and just wishing you, Derek, the fastest and the quickest possible recovery. My thoughts and best wishes are, are with you now, and uh, you've become a good friend. And I will miss talking to you the next few weeks at 2 o'clock in the morning like I've become accustomed to <laughs> these past couple months. So uh, get better. Uh, miss you, and uh, take care. For those of you that aren't familiar with Skepticality, uh, it's a great podcast, and I would recommend you go over and, and, and listen to it. Derek will be back. Um, you know, go to, go to the website, go to the forum board, just let them know you're thinking of them. Um, send an email to feedback at skepticality.com. Let Derek and Swoopy know that you're thinking of them. We here at Podcast 411 and all the other members of the 138 definitely have Derek in our thoughts right now, and we're going to go ahead and move on with the show. Since it's Saturday, we're going to go ahead and play a tech tip from Michael Carino. Here we go. I'm Michael Carino from the DigitalMediaCastExperiment.com with another Podcast 411 tech tip. As podcasters, just about all of us release our shows as audio files compressed with MP3 technology. But do you really know what's going on behind the scenes when you're making an MP3 file? Audio compression is a rather tricky subject because there's a lot of data that's not too similar, which makes it difficult to compress. MP3 technology is considered a lossy compression method. In other words, the resulting file loses some quality in exchange for a smaller file size. There are two main settings you'll need to know when compressing an audio program. The bits per second and the number of channels. The bits per second tell you at what rate the data must flow through the system to the media player. The assumption is that you're listening to the program while streaming it through a network connection. In this case, a bit rate of about 32 kilobits per second is about all you can really expect to stream on a dial-up connection. Since podcasts are downloaded, the bit rate doesn't really matter much as far as playback goes, but since the lower bit rate means a smaller file, the speed at which your listeners can download the file is affected. Also, the amount amount of space you're using on your website is affected too. High bit rates will give you better fidelity, but in the podcasting community, it's also considered a bit rude. There are four different channel settings you can use with MP3 compression. Mono, joint stereo, stereo, and dual stereo. Mono will give you the smallest file since it has only one channel of material to present. Stereo and dual stereo will need twice the bit rate to get the same quality as a mono channel. Joint stereo will attempt to let one channel borrow from the other channel if it can to squeeze better fidelity from the available bit rate. Next time you build a podcast or even rip a song from a CD, check out the different settings. You may surprise yourself. And thank you, Rob, for letting me talk to your audience. Michael, thanks as always for the tech tip. If you out there have a tech tip or rant or other piece of podcasting information you'd like to share with the listeners, please send them to podcast411 at gmail.com and in the subject just write tech tip. Well, we're going to go ahead and get into our interview here with Charlie. First off, we're going to play a promo for the Tired Thumbs podcast done by none other than Wichita Rutherford himself. And then after the promo, we'll get right into the interview. Here we go. Hello there. I'm Wichita Rutherford. Are your thumbs tired? No? And you ain't played enough video games, big boy. If you want to hear about PlayStation, Xbox, PlayStation Portable, Game Boy, and Game Boy Advance, then you best get over to TiredThumbs.com. 
Is it little tips and little tricks you're looking for? Let me tell you something. Charlie George, he's going to tell you all about these things. He keeps up with gaming and gaming news and all the things you want to know. Charlie's going to talk to everybody and ask them what the little tips and little tricks are that they know. If it's action you're into, he'll tell you all about it. And he'll talk to people that are all into it. So you get your game playing high in over there to tiredthumbs.com. Hey, this is Wichita Rutherford, and we'll see you. Charlie, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Traditional first question, what was your first computer? Uh, Packard Bell 386. That doesn't sound like much of a game machine. Uh, no, it was, uh, I think, uh, 8-bit, 16-bit, something like that. Yeah, it doesn't sound like you'd be playing Doom on that now. I couldn't even play Wolfenstein on it. Oh, jeez. Yeah, we were talking about Castle Wolfenstein on a couple other podcasts. I don't know if I made it to the edit part on that, but that seemed to be one of you know the one game that everyone said you know was like the precursor to Doom was the first game that you really could go through and blow things up. Yeah, it was a blast. Now on the podcasting side, what was the first podcast you ever listened to? Uh, that'd be Don and Drew. I saw an article in the paper about podcasting, and I mean at that point I didn't know what an aggregator was or how to even download this stuff. So I went to the site, downloaded it, listened to it, and I said, man, I could do this. And now you are. Yeah, I am. 25 shows into it already, and still got great content going on. What podcast do you listen to right now on a regular basis? Well, I listen to the source code uh, as mu- much as I can. I listen to Are You a Geek podcast. I do listen to Don Drew still. I do listen to your show, Podcast 411, because you do some great interviews with really interesting people. I I listen to other gaming shows just to see maybe things I can improve or content that I'm not touching on that I should. I kind of keep that as the rule stick for me as far as measuring how good my content can be or where I can go with it. Let's talk a little bit about your show. I noticed one on, on the length of your show as I was downloading are anywhere from a minute and a half to 35 minutes. Is there a typical <laughs> length you're shooting for? <laughs> uh, the minute and a half one was kind of something I just, I found out some information and I felt that I had to get it out there. It was about the, this new firmware update for the PSP. I was like, well, I could do, I, I'll, I'll just do a real quick update and that'll be that. But uh, initially the show started at about 30 minutes. That was me going into a program called Saw and doing a lot of post-production and things like that. And then I found Pod Producer, which is a freeware uh, podcasting recording client. And I did that for a little bit, and I said, man, this really sucks. <laughs> so I'm in beta right now for Cast Blaster. I haven't bought it yet. So right now the shows are about 10 minutes in length. As much as I'd like them to be longer, but until I get Cast Blaster, they're going to be at about 10 minutes for now. But I do shoot for about 30 minutes. Okay. What is the basic format? When people come and listen, is it gaming, just gaming news? Is it gaming tips? Is it a combination? What are you well, trying to educate your listeners about? Right now, as the show is divided up to uh, three episodes a week, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. On the Monday show, I review a game, and this has been my mantra, really. I always felt when I bought a game, I didn't do enough research on it, and I got burned because it was pretty crappy. And I was like, okay, someone needs to go out there and tell people, you know, is this worth the 50 bucks? Or not, and that's what I do. You know, I tell them. You know, I play it. I, you know, just check it out, and I tell, them, is it worth it? And if it's not worth it, I'll tell them a ballpark range at what I would buy it at. But you were referring to the podcast uh, a little bit. Uh, what I try to do, mm-hmm. um, and I want to get back to that real quick. Yeah. Uh, Wednesday, I do gaming news, mm-hmm. and I do the email bag sort of thing, and I also do my. Tired Thumbs Gaming Tip of the Week, which is a cheat or somewhere where you can have a lot of fun without doing a lot of work. And then on Friday, I do a podcaster game file where I talk to a podcaster and I ask them, you know, what, what's on their shelf? What are they playing? And we usually have a lot of fun with that. Yeah, I heard your interview with Eric from the Force.net. It was a good interview. Uh, that was a blast. That was a uh, five to six minute interview that turned into a 30 minute interview. <laughs> yeah, Eric can talk. I know. I had a lot of editing to get his interview down to 15 minutes. It was a blast, though. I, I really enjoyed talking with him, and his knowledge of Star Wars surpassed it's, mine. Oh, yeah. I, I felt so small and insignificant compared to his power of the Force. And he has a great podcast. I listened to that one, too. And, you know, I, I just sent out an email to him saying, hey, you know, 
you want to do an interview about Star Wars games? And of course, he said, sure. <laughs> Uh, who are some of the other podcasters you've had on your show? I've had uh, Adam Christensen from the MacCast. Okay. Victor Cahill from the Typical PC User Podcast. Okay. Just played his promo the other day. and uh, Jennifer Snotty from the Tech, the Girl on Tech Podcast. Okay. I had uh, Kevin Devin from In the Trenches. I had uh, Wichita Rutherford. Now, that was an interesting interview. Now, I interviewed Wichita. How hard time did you have staying on track? Well, uh, he, he said he had this dog called Smarty. I don't know if you experienced this. Yeah. And I, I'd be talking to him, and his dog would be going off every minute or so, and we'd be talking about the dog. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, it, it turned out to be the most entertaining 10 minutes I ever had interviewing somebody. Oh, yeah. Someone asked me, you know, who have had the most fun interviewing, and it was Wichita. Cause you know, it, was just, it was just crazy. It was, it was great. It, it, yeah, and it was... You know, nothing was uh, scripted or anything. And the cool thing about uh, getting Wichita, I emailed him, I think, in the afternoon, and I had him on the podcast that night. He was really open to it, so that was really cool. Yeah, he's a, he's a very good guy. Good podcaster, and he, he really is good for the community. Definitely, definitely. I think the funniest line that he did was, well, I was at the computer store, and some guy was bringing a computer with an alien on it. <laughs> and obviously he's talking about Alienware, the, mm-hmm. the hardware, and I, I just burst out laughing, you know, it sounded like someone in the crop saying there's crop circles and things like that. <laughs> it was great. What does your wife think about you doing podcasting? Uh, well, my wife is like most wives out there who are married to people who like to play on the computer. And we have two kids, too. I forgot to throw that in there, Annie and Amanda. And, you know, she, she likes it as long as it doesn't interfere with family time. And that's completely understandable because you got to spend time with your family. It's mm-hmm. just one of those things. You know, a happy family makes for a happy family. And I work my way around that. But, yeah, and, and that and the other podcasts I do with uh, some other people, you know, that one I have to schedule with the wife just because... You know, doing one podcast when she's working is fine, but having to do one when, you know, all the family's home and that, that's another story. What is your background in video games? I mean, um, are you, you, obviously, you have to look at a lot of different video games to give this, these tech tips. Are you in the video game industry or are you just an avid user? I am an avid user, and what's kind of cool about it, now that I've kind of done this for a while, I've uh, kind of talked to the publishers, actually, and they've given me some demos, some full versions, which is kind of cool. I recently talked to this last company, in fact, last week, who ports PC games over to the Mac. So people who play, who don't know that you can play PC games on the Mac, oh, man, if I got surprises. <laughs> <laughs> Are you on the Mac? Uh, eventually, um, whenever this is going to be played, I don't know when, but uh, I'm currently uh, looking at getting an eMac sometime this fall because I want to make the switch, <laughs> as they say. Well, let's not forget this. Uh, tell our listeners where to locate your podcast and website. Oh, uh, main site is at tiredthumbs.com, and there you can click on the one-click subscription for iTunes, or you can click on the XML, or you can just click on the logo and enter the site and look at all the wonder. And you know, the cool thing about my podcast, it's G-rated. You know, we don't swear or anything, so the kids can listen to it. And you know, I hope parents listen. It's to not it an too. AO. It's not an AO rating. Oh, no, no. Farther from that, it's G-rated. And what's great about it is that I can talk to parents, too, because like with this whole thing with Grand Theft Auto recently, they put an AO rating on it. And what I did, I just went on and said, you know, parents out there, take the game away. And I know it's not kind of cool if you have kids listening to it. They're like, oh, I hope my parents don't hear about it. But I think there's a thing where you have to be responsible for what you do. What is the whole story behind San Andreas? Was, who put that? Easter egg in there. You know, they're, they're saying it's a third party, but <laughs> I can't believe that at this point because I, I was talking to some people who I can't really name, and they say that the the programming was embedded in the code already. It was just this hot coffee modification that brought it out of the game. Now, if a modification can bring something out of the game, that means it was in the game. Now, if Rockstar initially did it and said, oh, we better hide this because we don't want that adult-only rating, someone probably went out there and said, okay, how do we bring this out? So I think Rockstar, if they did do it, they tried to hide it. You know, if you play the game, you know, just as it is, you won't find it. But if you're looking for it, 
there's ways to find it. Now, I know a lot of websites have pulled this modification off their websites and support Rockstar, which is very admirable. Yeah, but you got to imagine that this is a great marketing tool for the program and, and the game. And, you know, who's who, any 17 or 16-year-old kid that's got the money is going, damn, I know which game I'm buying. Right, now, but the only problem now, when uh, they got slapped with the adult-only rating from the ESRB, which is the Electronic Safety Ratings Board, they're kind of like the MPAA uh, who uh, rates movies. Uh, ever since that happened, uh, stores like Best Buy, Walmart, Target, GameStop, one of the big retailers out there, they pulled it off their shelves. And they're waiting until the fall when Rockstar republishes the game with the M rating. Yeah, in the fall, just in time for the Christmas rush. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, this is all. It seems to me just like a big marketing play, um, and, and, and and a very good one at that. I mean, if I'm 17 years old, I know which game I want. You know, my Christmas list is boom. That's it. And if you're 17, you can get an M-rated title. Mm-hmm. You know, it's only if it's an AO rating. And what's weird about this? This is pretty much the first time uh, a game has been rated this. Uh, if you look at uh, some of the magazines out there and you look at the little ESRB articles, you'll, say, you'll see that the adult-only rating has never been put on a game before. So that's changed now because it is an AO rating. Uh, Electronic Boutique, another one of those gaming stores, they are carrying the adult-only rating for the Xbox, PS2, and the PC. Now, do you remember the first video game to get banned? Uh, it had to be either Leisure Suit Larry or... That's the only thing I can think of. Custer's Revenge on the Atari 2600. Really? Did it? Was it better than E.T.? Well, it was. The whole idea of the game was at the end you were fighting the Indians, and at the end you got to um, defoliate one of the Indian natives. Ah, oh, nice. Yeah, nice, yeah. Nice. yeah. So that got that game banned. So I imagine if you could find it, it's probably now worth going on eBay. Money, eBay, yeah. here I come. Yeah, so I don't know if anyone's got a copy out there. But, yeah, I remember that it was probably 1983. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's pretty extreme for that time, too, huh? Mm -hmm. And Atari published this, huh? It wasn't Atari. It was um, one of the third parties that was doing the game. It was, you know, like back then you had Activision and other people making the game. Some other, someone programmed programmed this game, and it got banned. Activision was, back when the Atari 2600 was out, it was the premier publisher. Oh, it, it, their games were kick, kick total butt over everybody else's games. And you want to know what else is cool? Um, I was saying I was talking to a couple of these software companies that sent me out a title for the Game Boy Advance, which was called the Activision Anthology, and it contains every single Activision game for the Atari Twenty Six Hundred, for your Game Boy Advance or Nintendo DS. And I'm having a blast. Because if you remember from Activision, you got to uh, win patches if you get the highest score. Do you remember that? No, I don't. I've never got the highest score, evidently. <laughs> well, if you, well, if you do, well, the, the trick to it was you read the uh, back of the guide. Oh, I never yes. read the guides. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if you did... Um, There'd be, they'd say, hey, if you get this score, take a picture of it, send it into Activision, and they'll send you a patch for your jacket or shirt okay. or whatever. Well, if you do that now and you beat the high score, and the game did have a patch originally, you'll get a, like a little graphic of the patch. Oh, cool. So, and th- this is a great game for anybody who misses a 2600. You know, I still have a- my 2600. It still works. I do, too. It's uh, in my parents' attic. Still in the bo- original box. Mine's not in the original box, but I also have my Atari 800, and I play my games on that still. I don't remember that one. Uh, that was probably before my time. The 800 came out after the 20. It was the computer. Oh, okay. My favorite game of all time, Captain Beebles. So I doubt anybody remembers Captain Beebles. I, I don't even know what Captain Beebles is. I, I did have the Atari 7800, which lasted all but, I think, a couple months. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> my parents would not let me have a Nintendo under no circumstances. What advice would you like to offer to those starting up a podcast? If you have some a content item that you're really passionate about, do it. If you have questions, ask, because there's a lot of people out there who are going to help you. If you have questions, ask. And it's a piece of cake. If you got a headset or a microphone, you're good to go. Yeah. And I always tell people, you know, go to my forum boards. i got forum boards, and there's other forum boards out there. There's some, you know, people will help each other. They're very helpful in this community. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a great community, yeah. Uh, 
fact, I sent stuff off to Adam Curry once, and you know, he said, do this, and well, it worked. Even in the highest of places, people can help you. Anything um, about your podcast we didn't go over that you'd like to cover? Uh, well, I also do that podcast. I also do another podcast uh, with uh, two people, uh, my friends Phil and Aaron. Uh, it's called Podcast Nation. Uh, it's just starting out, but it's uh, it's interesting. It's kind of G to PG rating. Uh, it's over at uh, podcastnation.blogspot. Oh, your your wife right. must just love that. That's when I hit the schedule with her. <laughs> <laughs> he's playing all the video games so that he can actually do research for his podcast, which is taking up all his time so he's not getting to bed till 3 in the morning, and now you're going to do another podcast? Oh, you, you want to know the worst part about it? The last three weeks, um, I've been playing RPGs to review, mm-hmm. and RPGs, those are like 50-hour games. Uh, role-playing games for my yeah. audience that doesn't know what the RPG stands for. It's a time investment, folks. <laughs> and it's hard, but um, we do. I do that. I schedule that with the wife. But we talk about tech stories. Obviously, I cover the gaming end. It's a lot of fun. But uh, you know, we do that. Podcasting's easy. It's just how you communicate the message and what kind of content you're carrying. Well, Charlie, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Well, folks, that concludes our interview with Charlie George from the Tired Thumbs Podcast. Thanks, Charlie, for coming on the show. If you're into video games, please check out Charlie's podcast at TiredThumbs.com. Coming up at the end of today's show, we'll play a promo from the Indie Eye podcast. And on our next show, what we're going to do is a little retro show. We're going to go back to early January, and I'm going to replay the interview I did with Tim Henson from The Distorted View. A couple reasons. One, because Tim recently mentioned he doesn't like to do interviews, and and he said his early interviews, he sounded like a tool, so this is partially to embarrass Tim, but also to show you why I always tell people to wait until they do three or four shows, five shows, before they start promoting their early shows. You'll get to hear how bad the audio quality really was on the early interview. Just going to replay the interview part. We will wrap the beginning and end with new tech tips and promos. Uh, So it's just the interview that's being replayed. So that'll be this Monday, September 12th, and it will be a replay or a retro interview with Tim Henson from The Distorted View, so please check that out. Well, that's going to do it for us. Again, Derek, Susan, Swoopy, our thoughts and well wishes are with you guys. Uh, Derek, here's to a fast and quick recovery. This is your host, Rob, from Podcast 411. As always, reminding you to listen different. Songwriters. Recording artists. Indie labels. Musicians. Managers. Indie Eye. Demystifying the music business for independent music makers. Hi, this is Dave Phillips, host of Indie Eye. Join us each week for easy-to-apply tips, success stories, and artist interviews that will move you forward in the crazy business of music. Don't miss an episode. Subscribe to Indie Eye at iTunes and check out our blog at IndieRelease.com.